you, Dave. I'm going to welcome my team. So we're going to show you a little bit of Heal Work to Music this afternoon. The activity of Heal Work to Music is separated into two classes. That's freestyle and Heal Work to Music. So the team are just going to line up and they're going to show you the Heal Work to Music class. There's eight recognised Heal Work to Music positions. We can't hear the music in the ring, so it's a little bit difficult to dance to. And then they're going to show you a transition move to move into another heel work to position to come back down the ring. As you can see, there's a variety of breeds. Any dog can do this activity. Pedigree, crossbreed, or rescue. You can go normal pace, fast pace, or slow pace. Whereas the handlers are showing you now some side stepping. And now some of them are going to show you some, some backing as well in heel work. So I mentioned there was two classes for heel work to music. The second class is freestyle. So they're going to show you some freestyle moves now. So the first move they're going to show you is the leg weave. So this is one of the foundation moves we teach in heel work to music. So the leg weave is when the dog passes underneath the handler's leg. So once you've taught that move, you can do a variety with that move. And now we're going to show you the twist and the spin. So that's a 360 degree circle. Again, once the dog's learned that behavior, you can put it in any position in front of you or to the side. The next thing they're going to show you is walking back. So the dog learns to walk back, which is a fantastic move. It looks really good. But then once you've also, once you've also done that move, you can also teach all sorts of different reverse moves. Now they're going to show you a pose. So we're going to show one pose. Now a pose is a static move. You can use at the start, middle, or end of your routine. So they're going to show you. So you can see the dogs are doing all different styles of uh, poses. Let's see what else they can do. Next pose, ladies. Pose two. Now part of Here Work to Music is musical interpretation. So Gary's singing, you mean the world to me. What are they doing? Except for the flat coach, upside down. <laughs> and pose three, excellent. Okay, now what I ask the team to show you now is the thing about Here Work to Music is you can work with what your dog loves to do. So what I ask them to do is show you what their dogs love to do, whether it's heel work, jumping, a bit of freestyle, some twists, some spins. So what they're showing you now is their dog's favorite moves. The handlers on the team are from all around the country, and there's workshops and classes all around the country where you can find out more information in Hall 3. These guys all come, all the dogs come from different backgrounds. The little Papillon is in the breed ring and on the weekend to a rescue dog, Freckle, the little crossbreed here. She's been a, a rescue dog. So. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, the Hill Work to Music team. Well done, team. <laughs> and I'm now going to welcome Leo, who's going to talk about the Bloodhounds. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our two Bloodhounds that we have here today. We're part of dog activities because of the bloodhound trials that are operated four times a year under the auspices of the Kennel Club. We're one of the few countries in the world that actually have championship trials for bloodhounds, for hunting the clean boo. Today we have with us Liz Cudlip, who's come from the northeast, with Khalid, the dog, and Clementine, the bitch. Both these hounds are in ports. The bitch is from the former Czech Republic, and the dog comes from a working background in Germany. Liz has 14 bloodhounds at home. She comes from the northeast. She's a seasoned dog exhibitor, has many bassets, and has 14 bloodhounds, and is planning to embark on bloodhound trials as well as showing. The two that are in front of you here today are both English champions. She has two more champions at home, and uh, in the short space of time that she's joined the world of bloodhounds, She's done very well and a valued asset to our breed. An old breed with a small gene pool that needs an element of diversity. We don't like the exaggerations. We like to have nice clean eyes, clean faced bloodhounds, but still with the long ears and the wrinkle that they're renowned for. 
they're a big dog, solid dog that needs good confirmation. And these two here today are a very good example of the breed, particularly the dog hound. The dog hound enjoys being in the limelight. He likes showing himself off, whereas the bitch is a little bit more placid and a little more sensitive. As a breed, they are sensitive. They are rather shy, uh, but a lovely breed to own. Need to do your homework if you plan to have a bloodhound. Not particularly easy to manage. Need a lot of exercise. Need a lot of food, particularly as youngsters, but make lovely companions. And for a large breed, they can live into double figures. Not like some breeds that sadly go before they reach the age of 10. These can get into double figures with the right management, the right exercise. Lovely old breed, lot of support from the Kennel Club and the Breed Clubs for this breed. And I'm grateful to Liz and her helper Robert from having come from the North East the early hours this morning to bring Khalid and Clementine for you to have a look at. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce you to Claire now, who's going to give you a display of Obedience Stroke Rally. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Leo. You're going to see now a Obedience Display team. So let's welcome the team into the ring. And first we have a send away being performed by Monty the Golden Retriever. So you notice some equipment has gone out into the main arena. And there's Sheila just getting Monty ready. If we could just clear the back of the send away area, that's it. Okay, Sheila. So he's being pointed to the area. That's a send away. We're now going to do the second part of the exercise, which is collecting to heel work again. There he goes, he gets his command. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? Let's give Monty some encouragement. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is four dogs of a very high standard. And as you've noticed, they are four different breeds. So although it's fair to say that Border Collies are a very popular breed in obedience, it's not true to say that they're the only ones who are capable. As you can see, we've got four dogs here working very well indeed. So we again have Monty the Golden Retriever that we've just seen, but we also have Lou, the Shetland Sheepdog. They're currently doing heel work, which is a compulsory element of obedience. They're working off the lead. But the thing you will not realize is that there are no commands going on. So dog and handler are having to work together as a partnership using body language and obviously years of practicing, training and getting up to this very high standard. Now we're doing first pace. And let's have a round of applause for that heel work with Monty and Lou, well done. Now we're seeing Jace, the Border Collie, with Garbo, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So again, one of the more unusual breeds that we see in obedience, but she's far from the only one that competes. What we're looking at now are positions on the move. So we see the sit first there, and when we have a stand and a down, and all of these need to be achieved during heel work. I must say at this point that this Staffordshire Bull Terrier that you see here is the only one of her breed to have achieved an obedience warrant. And that means that she's gone all the way up the levels, getting the right number of qualifiers, and has been able to be awarded this particular qualification. So when she comes to the end of this section, I think we need to congratulate her on that. But let's just let, let them do the last position here, which is the down. You can see how smoothly this is carried out. There should be no pause between the command from the handler and the action from the dog. Wasn't that lovely, ladies and gentlemen? Let's give that a round of applause. Well done. And of course, a special round of applause there for Garbo on achieving her obedience warrant. Now 
now we're doing a retrieve with Lou, the Shetland Sheepdog. So we have a toy here. Now the toy is provided by the judge on the morning of the competition and it could be anything. So you need to be practicing at home with all sorts of different articles. And as you notice there, he wasn't bothered by the size of the toy. Well done, Lou. Let's give him some encouragement. So all these dogs work at Class C, which is the top level of obedience competition, and three of them work at championship level. So you notice now here we're doing some teamwork. We're going to do distance control. One. Two. Three. Return to your dogs. So let's hold the applause until the handlers return. And I think you'll agree, fantastic display there of distance control. Well done, handlers. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so I think you'll join me in thanking these handlers. We've got Sheila with Monty, the golden retriever. <laughs> Teresa with Lou, the Sheltie. Sandra with Jace, the Border Collie. And how could we forget the magnificent Garbo with Marnie. So come and see us in Hall 3 Dog Activities to meet these lovely dogs and find out more about obedience. I'm now handing over to Stanford and Working Trials. Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon, everybody. First exercise from Working Trials, unique to our discipline, a speak on command. You'll see dog walking to heel. This dog is a Labrador, second most popular breed within our sport. Very good nose work dog. Okay, this dog is a Working Trials champion with Sheila Tannett. This is Teal. Teal is seven years old. Also, a German Shepherd, also quite a popular breed within, not as popular as it once was. Okay, this is McCoy, the Shepherd, and he is showing us a speak on command in a static position. Those of you that are very observant will notice Barry Gilbert laying a track within the arena, which he's going to work shortly with his dog. The nose work exercises carry the most marks within. Those of you that were observant will notice he's walked around the ring in a square, laid some articles, and the dog will be introduced, Cozzy, another working trials champion, a border collie, young dog, but he'll come into the ring and work this track. Now, what the dog is doing, he's actually following a disturbance on the ground, Unlike the bloodhounds, he's not air scenting. That's why his nose is on the ground all the time. There you see, he takes his first turn, quite clearly indicating the direction of the track. And here he's come to an article that's been laid by Barry. Now, one of the things in working trials, we can lay tracks for our own dogs. And here, Barry has laid articles down here, the dog's away. You wonder why the dog's on a harness? That's indicating to the dog exactly what the dog needs to do in the test, that he's working the track. Second article found. Handler recovers the article. And you can see how keen this dog is. Now, this is really, really difficult on this surface. Here you can see dogs charging around the turn coming back. All of the people that have walked in here today, that dog can still track around on this carpet. Most impressive. Well done, Barry. OK, another exercise. Send away. Also, we're going to do a redirection. If you could imagine this is a football field, dogs being sent out been sent out to the far end of the football pitch, perhaps 100 yards away, and redirected. Of course, we can't show you it going 300 yards because it would be across the car park. And note the control. Handler using a whistle, no emotion, no shouting, screaming, nice and quiet. 
Okay, thank you, Dave, from the Working Trials team. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Give a big round of applause, folks. A little bit of an insight into everything goes on in the Working Dog area. And give them a big round of applause now as they leave the arena. The obedience folks going away first over the corner of the first So a lovely demonstration there of just a few of the activities that uh, many of the people here at Crufts get involved with with their animals. And I must point out that you will be able to see quite a lot more on uh, obedience during the course of the next four days. It is an absolutely fascinating subject. It's how I first came to Crufts years and years ago back in the Dark Ages and uh, it really is fascinating to see what these dogs can do. But I hope you've enjoyed that. Some wonderful exhibits on uh, an exhibition of what these dogs can do.